Hello, my name is William Halfond. I'm an assistant professor here in the Computer Science Department at the University of Southern California. I'm going to talk to you today about the USC Master's Program in Software Engineering. First question I want to address is what is software engineering? It's a common misconception that software engineering is all about coding and programming. In fact, software engineering is much more than that. It's the application of a systematic, disciplined, quantifiable approach to the development and operation and maintenance of software. That is the application of engineering to software. And the types of activities that go on in software engineering are quite varied. Most of us are familiar with the construction phase, which is where all the programming and coding goes on. So that's the construction of the classes, the methods, and the functions. However, there's many other areas that also go into software engineering. We have requirements gathering, which is figuring out what are the different features or requirements that must be built in the software that we're developing. We also have architecture and design, so that's figuring out what is the high-level structure of the code. Is it client server? Is it distributed event-based system? What's the design of the system? In other words, what are the different classes that we're going to use? How are they going to interact? And what is going to be their pattern of usage? And then, of course, we have construction, which includes not just the coding and the programming, but also testing to find out if there's any bugs in the software. And then the final phase, one that's often forgotten, is maintenance. And this is after you release the software, how do you make sure that any bugs are fixed efficiently without introducing new errors in the software? How do you add new features and distribute this version effectively to all of your end users? Cutting across all of these different phases is also process management. And that is, how do you plan the software out? How do you figure out how much it's going to cost and manage your resources of developers and testers effectively? One of the big problems that we address in software engineering is issues of scale. And you and I both know that one small program is easy. In fact, by the time you're done with a bachelor's or a master's degree, it's fairly easy to be able to code small programs quite effectively and without errors. However, it becomes much more challenging with a medium-sized program. Now we have several programmers. We have to coordinate among them, make sure that we carefully control versions of the different resources, and basically just make sure that everybody is coordinating their efforts together. The problem gets even more challenging when we move, move to a huge program, one with millions of lines of code and perhaps thousands of programmers distributed across the globe. And here what we're really getting at is that it's hard to do software engineering well on a large scale. In fact, there's been lots of problems in software engineering. The National Institute for Standards and Technology has estimated that software bugs are so detrimental to the U.S. economy that they cost almost $60 billion dollars each year. The unfortunate thing about this is that over $20 billion, so about a third of that amount, could actually be prevented by using software engineering techniques such as testing that we already know how to do. And so this leads us to one of our missions here at USC, which is to offer a range of courses in state-of-the-art and best practices in software engineering. We have courses in software development processes, we have a two-semester course that focuses on a real-world project with clients who come into USC with software that they want developed, and students practice real software engineering processes on these projects. We also have classes on advanced software testing and analysis techniques, software architecture and modeling, web and mobile app development, and for everybody who's completed all of these basic classwork, we also have things like directed research, which focus on special and advanced topics in software engineering research and practice. We also have an extensive amount of research going on here at USC. Uh, there are four faculty whose research work overlaps with software engineering. That includes Barry Bain, myself, Ellis Horowitz, and Ninan Medvedevich. So just to give you a flavor of the kind of research that goes on here in software engineering, uh, Professor Bain's research focuses on improving the software process. And what you can see here is the incremental commit spiral model, one of the software process models that they work on. And the idea here is we're trying to figure out more efficient ways to develop the software and to manage the different phases of the software process so that we have projects that are more likely to be successful and within budget. Professor Bain has also developed techniques for estimating the cost of software. One of the very famous techniques that he's developed is called Kokomo, which enables software managers to predict using mathematical functions how much their software is going to cost and how long it's going to take to develop it. Professor Medvedevich's group also focuses on software architecture and modeling. And as some of the questions they're trying to address is how do we define the software system's architecture? 
So what are the components? What are its connectors? In other words, how are we connecting the different pieces? And what's the best way to lay them out for a piece of software? The goal of this is to be able to optimize architecture for things such as system performance, ease of maintainability, and being able to configure the software in a very flexible way. To give you an example of some of the problems they face, this is the, the intended architecture of the iRod system. And over here, it shows what happens when the developers actually implemented the system. As you can see, there's quite a difference between the intended and the actual. And this continues. For example, the Hadoop distributed file system. You may be familiar with that because it's the file system that underlies a lot of the big data or uh, Google search engines. This here is the intended software architecture. And then here we see what happens after the development effort finished. And this thing negatively affects performance. It makes it much harder to configure the system and of course makes it much more difficult to maintain. So to being able to detect these problems and also address them automatically is one of the things that Professor Minovich's research is looking at. My own research focuses on verification and validation of mobile web applications. And I look at four different areas, energy consumption, user interfaces, software abstractions, and also security vulnerabilities. Energy consumption has emerged as a very important quality metric for the mobile device platforms. It strongly influences usability. In other words, you know, a poorly designed app can drain the battery on your device and make it impossible or very ineffective uh, at performing other tasks. It also affects the perception of app quality. Users will base their ratings and their reviews of an app on the energy consumption of it or during runtime, and this in turn can affect the developer's revenue because there's maybe less downloads or maybe even more downloads if it does a good job at it. So the goal of my techniques is to help developers understand and change energy consumption in these applications. And so my projects include being able to predict how much energy an app is going to consume at runtime, being able to map an application while it's running, uh, its energy usage to the actual source lines, and then also automated transformation. So taking an app in, transforming it in some automated way so that the resulting version is more energy efficient. My research work also focuses on user interface presentation failures. So that's when the actual appearance of the user interface of an app does not match its intended interface or intended appearance. And here, what we want to be able to do is detect presentation failures, identify what's the root cause of these failures, and then ideally be able to automatically repair these. My students are addressing this in several novel ways. The general intuition is that they're trying to combine computer vision techniques to look at the rendering of the web pages and then also automated inference techniques to be able to determine what is the root cause or what is the elements in the page that are causing this presentation failure. So that was just a flavor of the different kind of research that's going on here in software engineering at USC. So remind you, we have many classes that cover the entire spectrum of software engineering knowledge from requirements all the way through maintenance. And then we also have active research in software process models, architecture and software modeling, and software testing and analysis. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you next semester.